You're listening to the Colts Blue Zone Podcast with Mike Chappell and Dave Griffiths. Inside the Fox 59 CBS4 Podcast Studio, welcome to the Colts Blue Zone Podcast. Alongside Mike Chappell and Matt Adams, I'm Dave Griffiths. Appreciate you joining us for another issue of Dave was right about the Indianapolis Colts in week one. Boo. Yeah, I know. You can boo me. You keep booing me. Why are you booing me? I'm right. Where's I it? love that meme. It's one of my favorite memes ever. The, Where's the cough button? Can you just exactly just, just keep me quiet. No, I'm not I'm I'm really not trying to sit here and gloat. I'm trying but for to the first here. 15 seconds. That's exactly what is, you've but done. But I am. But I'm. I'm. I'm saying. Oh, we we we've lost. Uh, we've <laughs> lost Dave's mic. Uh, so, no. <laughs> no, but but there's there are there are concerns about this Indianapolis Colts team. You've heard it from me throughout the summer. You've heard it from us, and I think that they some of them showed in mm-hmm. week one. Absolutely, they did. And, and and some of the things that we told you would happen for good showed in week one with Anthony Richardson. We said I said just last week, all of us to to be fair, that there would be great moments and there would be bad moments, and we saw them both in week one. You're going to see that for the rest of the year so buckle up Colts fans but what can't happen is 213 yards on the ground that was the one you thing you can't you can't that's that's the foundation of this defense that surprised the heck out of me chap. absolutely same here was same here stunning that they would give that up to Joe Mixon who was not averaged more than 4.1 yards well, per they're carry since pre-COVID Josh Jacobs is better than Joe Mixon I would argue that is the case but the, the, what, what surprised me I guess is from talking to players and, and even Gus Bradley is their approach was yeah, we're going to give up some run yards. Remember, because Gus said, well, I came in at halftime and they had 70 yards. And that's okay. Well, that's, that's 140. Yeah, that's not great. So, But their, their whole thing was they were not going to let Stroud go off for 380, 400. And they pressured him. I thought, they, I thought the front did a good job. Two or three plays, you want back. Third and 17, and he goes for 19. You can't have that. So, uh, But they, they, this defense does not work if they give up, gosh, 140 a game. Mm-hmm. You know, so that has to get tightened up real quick. I understand the the mindset to not let Stroud go off because he's the reason that you got knocked out of the playoffs last year. Him and Nico Collins, who also is turning into a Colts killer, had a hundred yards again, didn't he? Yes, yes he, did. he did. Yep, had a couple really kept important him under one ninety nine though. Mm-hmm. There you so. go, one ninety nine. Congratulations, but um, but but anyway, I was saying it makes sense to try to put it on Joe Mixon. Like if if I was a defensive coordinator, I said, well, on one side, the passing game, you have C.J. Stroud, you have uh, Stephon Diggs, you have uh, you have Nico Collins, you have Tank Dell, and then you have Joe Mixon. Who who would you rather? Uh, right. Who would you rather put the game in his hands? Like, well, let's see if Joe Mixon can beat us. And guess what? Joe Mixon could beat you, which is unfortunate that Joe Mixon could. Like when you're trying to trying your best to stop the um. To stop to stop the pass right. that you still weren't solid enough to slow down the run enough not to right. give up quite so much right. so so that that's kind of how I come away from it looking at the defense it was an unfortunate incident from practice today on Thursday um, for the second day in a row no DeForest Buckner no Quiddy Pay no Julian Blackman out there that's per our Brett Bensley that's at least at the beginning of practice when media is allowed to view it um, who knows maybe uh, after they usher everyone out there inside they'll they'll bring out uh, some of those players but at least for now at the start of practice did not see either of those guys for the second day in a row. All starters on the defense, mind you. All fairly important starters on the defense, mind you. And then Josh Downs is out there for a second day in a row. So after a limited day on Wednesday, Josh Downs again out on the practice fields on Probably Thursday. Probably limited. We'll get the report later. Exactly. But I, I'd imagine it sounds like he is on the path to return, right. which which would be very uh, encouraging, I think, for the offense in, in a team in a passing game that, that struggled to find consistency in in the intermediate and shorter areas, which is his, his what bread he does. and butter. So yep. that, that's what you want to see him, him getting back in the field. I would imagine that, that would provide a boost to the Colts offense to have him back, to add to what we had already proved last week to see uh, what they can do down the field. Yeah. We talked to Reggie Wayne today and it's always entertaining and informative to talk to Reggie because he just gives you stuff. He just said, you know, paraphrasing that people have underestimated this offensive or the, the, this wide receiver room, he thinks it's pretty good. He talked probably seven minutes before he mentioned Michael Pittman's name because he was talking on the other guys and he said, just wait till we get Josh Downs back and what he can do. So uh, it's it's a good group. And, and, and again, Downs does things that no one else on the team does. Anthony Gould, yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of what he did in college. But they don't have anyone who replicates what Downs does. And I, I thought the, the biggest – problem on offense is not sustaining things they were five of ten on third downs which i thought was deceiving i didn't think they were that good they were over three to start with 
And uh, I, I think when you've got a Downs is, I guess a security blank, but blanket, but he can he can take it and go twenty yards mm-hmm. in the blink of an eye. So if he's back, it changes things. It, it adds to what they do. I shouldn't say it changes. Things. It adds to what they do offensively, which is pretty uh, intriguing. Yeah, and, he, and of course you got to hit him. And we saw plenty of Anthony Richardson hitting Josh Downs on those routes during training camp. To be fair, um, there were several times in the first game this year, and I, I go back to the fourth down on their very first possession. I know that's probably the twentieth thing a lot of Colts fans are thinking about after this game. For me, it is one of the top three things I, I was thinking about after the game as we were about to ask questions to the players, to the coaches, and all that in the locker room. It's like, man, like Anthony can throw it a country mile and he can put it on the dot uh fr- from a country mile but to be a consistent good <laughs> starting nfl quarterback you've got to be able to hit a throw to an open receiver on a five-yard comeback route on fourth and one so, and, and it was there mm-hmm. i mean if he just delivers that ball in yep. the area code that's a first down for the colts and, and also that that the play call was something that was puzzling too because the Colts have talked up all offseason how they have the best run game in the league they have the they have Jonathan Taylor they have Anthony Richardson it's going to be impossible to stop these guys they have an offensive line that uh, like four of the guys make 20 million dollars or more or something like that or at least three of them do and the other one is very much well on his way Um, so uh, so you don't even have run action on that play on fourth and one. It's not even a play fake to Taylor. It's not even the option to give uh, Anthony Richardson a scramble roll out. And hey, if there's one yard there, just go ahead and dive for the first Getting down. Getting too cute maybe it, early Maybe, on. like may, maybe it was. And and, and that's, like, it, I think for me, like I, You see that. You see them getting too cute. And I thought again back to the fourth down at the end of last year that they lost the season on like it was it was a cute play. It was it was throwing to a backup running back was the play call right in that sense. Yes, I think so. But it was cute to try to get it to not one of your top playmakers in that instance. In this place, it was like you're also throwing to a rookie in this. Like, I I think A.D. Mitchell is in spite of him not doing uh, much of anything uh, he was open a couple times but so that like he shows promise but but why would you throw to a rookie on fourth down like this is this is your gotta have it down whatever the Chiefs are in fourth down it's Patrick Mahomes rolling out and hitting Travis Kelsey you know whatever the Eagles are in fourth down it's Jalen Hurts rolling out and seeing if he can hit AJ Brown on a short route like this this is what teams across the NFL do and that's it's what, not what that, the Colts that's what, do that's what Pittman is exactly right. that's right. what Pittman where, where should Pittman? be yep. yeah where's Pittman in this case like where, where what's he doing where's Jonathan Taylor why isn't he getting an option so 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 these these are the things that that give me pause about the Indianapolis Colts when I come on the air last week and I say hey I think they're an eight and nine team whereas other people give them higher higher grades and higher expectations like that that these are reasons why that I still doubt this team because of instances like this where where coaching gets too cute I think Shane Steichen's a great coach, but sometimes it seems like he wants to be the smartest guy in the room when you just have to give it to your best players and let let the chips fall where they may. And and, and so so some of these some of these things in in this first game just just kind of shone a light on some of the problems that I have with this team and the concerns I have with this team if they want to be in the hunt at the end of the season for a playoff berth. Well, I, well, I I go back to after the Carson Wentz year when we talked to, to Chris Ballard in January and what he, what he drove home was make the layups, make the layups all for the most part. All we've talked about us when I say we meaning the media this week is th- those, those deep balls, two to Pierce and one to D- uh, Doolin. Carson and they, could uh, throw those balls. And they, yeah, but yeah, he got, okay. We're not going down that rabbit hole, but, but it's it's as great as those plays are, and, and that's got to be part of this offense. Sykin wants the uh, explosives. You got to convert third and six. You've got to have to the sideline, and that's that. Yes, but you know, two things that jump out at you: twenty minutes of time in possession, and forty three plays. Well, the fact that you that you have two long touchdown plays in, in the long pass to to to, to 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 Pierce, it sort of takes away drives take something away there sure but still understand that you've got to convert and, and maintain and if, if you convert a few of those early maybe you get the running game going mm-hmm. with with taylor what taylor average three yards a carry mm-hmm. i think so yeah that's yep, not gonna right work on. nope so but uh we've got it there's got to be the balance between the shock plays and the layups and and again we all always point to this richardson has started five games mm-hmm. so we're gonna have this 
roller coaster. He just needs to make the, the lows a little less low. So, yeah, he, he needs to make the layups like another quarterback that was here a couple of years ago. Like it's it's eerily similar to me, the, the skill set like uh, Anthony is a better, a more athletic, uh, a stronger uh, like he reminds me of Wentz when Wentz was early in his career in Philly, and he was the MVP caliber player that that got the Eagles the the uh, the first the number one overall seed in in the NFC, and eventually Nick Foles brought them to the Super Bowl. Like he can because that Carson could want, run before his injury. Like this 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 Richardson is certainly more dynamic than 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 Carson ever was. Don't get me wrong; I'm not saying that they're on the exact same level, but there there are similarities between their games, which makes some sense because I mean when Chris Ballard first agreed to sign Carson and bring him in here, like these are qualities that he has, and Anthony Richardson has these qualities and, and the potential to to increase them even more so. So that's the kind of quarterback that Ballard likes: is guys with traits that can chuck it deep. And Dan, you just need to work on it. You need to work on those short uh, short routes. And with with the rookie out there, well, we the, saw that in preseason that the erratic. Yes, exactly. On on, on, on so, finesse and, passes and, or whatever. And I anticipate at the end of this year, Richardson's going to be a better player than he is now, no doubt about it. Which which gives you which should encourage Colts fans that if they are in the hunt for the playoffs at the end of the season, like I think you should really be like if they have a good shot, if it's not like 15, 20 percent, you know what I mean? If they have like a 50 to 70 percent chance of making the playoffs because they have to win a couple games, like I think that that should make you feel pretty excited if you're a Colts fan because that 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 version of Anthony Richardson should, big should, be better than the guy he is right now. And we already saw what he can do right now, which is what few other quarterbacks – uh, who have ever played could do that pass to Pierce in the first uh, first half was um, from from stats from the NFL's next gen stats the third longest completion in terms of air yardage since they started 65. tracking point three I think they posted. yes that was in um, t- 2016 is when they started tracking Mike Chapel do you know the two quarterbacks the two longer plays in terms of air yardage I heard one of them and, and you think really uh-huh. go ahead I can't well one is Baker Mayfield. Was uh, that's not the one? That, no, okay, that, yeah, that was number two. That's the second longest, the number two. Sam Baker Darnold. Mayfield. It was on a not no, Sam not Darnold. Sam Darnold. He, that was on a um, on a uh, hail mary pass, and Donovan Peoples Jones caught it in the end zone. The number one in terms of air yardage since 26, 20, uh, 2016 uh, the, on a completed pass is former Indianapolis Colts quarterback. P.J. Walker yeah, okay. completed knew, the pass. I knew it was one of those that to think, D.J. Really? Moore with the Carolina Panthers. And I believe that was two years ago because it couldn't have been last year because Moore was, of course, gone. And uh, the Panthers were, of course, terrible. And I don't know if they gained 68 yards all season uh, last year, the Carolina Panthers. Not sure they're going to get there this yeah, year. Yeah, it certainly doesn't look like it. When we were talking to Reggie, it was brought up. That somebody said, have you, have you ever been in a game and seen a pass like that? He said, Peyton couldn't throw it that far. <laughs> uh-huh. He said, luck could. But we had to keep him upright. So he never had the time to, right. to to ever do that. So I remember after Luck came back from the shoulder surgery or whatever it was, that one of the first games back into the first half, they took him out and they put Brissett in to throw a hail or yep. not hail mm-hmm. to, I remember to, that. To it was a hail mary at the end of yeah. the end of the first half. Yeah. So, but this, I think the Colts posted that that video from the catwalk or whatever you call it, skywalk. Oh yeah, yeah. From yeah, it's an it's that, that's, that's why the roof was open. Yeah. To give the ball so we wouldn't skim off the top of it. But I thought, as great as that play was, and it was, I thought the one to Doolin was unbelievable. The A window rocket. for that the one, win- it, so tight. Oh, it was like two inches. Yeah, The linebacker had to think he was going to knock it down. Mm-hmm. So, But that, again, we, we've seen, I don't know if we've seen those passes in, in training camp that he did, but you, you got to hit, hit a few layups mm-hmm. because this, this offense – needs to stay on the field. It needs to get Jonathan Taylor involved. But from all the research I had, I, I, the, the Colts put out that the three 50-yard completions were the most since 2000. That's as far back as their the stat group okay. has. I've got stuff because I'm a squirrel and I put things away. I think it's the most since they've been in Indy. Uh, and, and Peyton never had one, obviously. Right. And Pierce having two, he's one of only three players to have two fifty yarders in a game. Mm-hmm. You know who they are? Did you read? The, did Did you read your media packet? I did not read my media packet. Who are the others? Marvin Harrison, Marvin, twice, Syracuse University, and one more in two thousand eleven. And I believe Curtis Painter was throwing it. Wow, really? 
Pierre Garçon. Garçon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, had like Pierre. an 87 and a 70-something. It was unbelievable. So, But it just shows you that we're, they're not going to get three 50-yarders. Not consi- you know, that's not feasible. Right. Like, it's just, it just doesn't For happen. an entire season, I, just, I was looking this up about teams and how many 50-yarders. Like the NFL.com is 40-plus yards. That's what the stat they show. And the top teams over the past couple of years are like 20 to 22 in terms of how many plays they have of 40-plus yards on right. offense. Two, two led the league last year with seven 50-yarders. Uh-huh. So it, it, it's – but again, and, and again, you, you, the jump ball to Pierce, you're, you're going to – he's going to win that 70% of the time. I mean, he's that good. But you, you want – like with Doolin, go back and look at how they designed that play. He's, he comes from the left side of the formation in motion, and then he works all – and then he works back across the field. And I don't know if he was the first read or not, but, but Richardson saw the chance. And again, get a chance and, and just look at the, the, tight, the tight window. So that that's what a quarterback needs to do is is hit that guy in stride, and that's again I think mm-hmm. that, that that's Downs' strength. Yep, hit me in stride and keep and, going. And if I can shake the linebacker or whoever's on me, then it's a play. It's a big play. So, but it, it's 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 that mixture of, of the shock plays and, and the layups. And again, that that was Richardson's fifth start. He's really only played a total of four games because he missed a half twice last year in two games. So. We've said from the start, and we're going, to be, we're going to be talking about this in December, that this is a work in progress, and it, we're, we're going to wear people out, and I hope we don't write every week about the good and the bad because there's going to be something there. But I, I think we've seen enough to know that he can do special things. Can he do the normal things? And that's mm-hmm. what will predicate how, how, how well this team does with him. And even that dueling pass came on the same drive – where he overshot A.D. Mitchell on the left sideline. Right. Just like a few plays before. Well, Reggie said, well, if you hit a couple of plays, we're going to hit throw for 400 yards. Well, if you hit Doolin, if you hit Mitchell for 70. Right. Right. Well, then a the few Doolin, plays later, then the, seven, yeah. the 54 would yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't, never come play up. goes out. Right. But, again, Mitchell was, was what, a couple of fingertips away. And that, the, yeah. the overthrow was more than that. But yeah. That was a 29-yard touchdown. Very easily, And the 70-yarder, yeah. would he have scored? I, the, the, the DB was kind of there. But what was I think what was encouraging or intriguing is that there was separation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he got free. He, he, got, he got free. And, and Pierce, somebody put out today's Andrew Luck's birthday. Hey, was, happy was, birthday. Was, so, 12, let's go. Yep. Yeah, so somebody put out a highlight. It was like two and a half minutes of Luck passes. Mm. And, and I'll, I, I retweeted. I just said, what might have been. But that's that's what that's what and most of them were to T. Y. Hilton. It was of course. A, some of the throws were just beautiful. But that's again, that's what that quarterback does. When as much as wasn't there that didn't work offensively, look around the league. Uh Bryce Young averaged three point two yards an attempt. He threw whatever it was, he threw for ninety nine yards. Uh Minshew wasn't much better and somebody else was about Caleb Williams points. was pitiful. That was it. That was it. Uh, and that's, I think that the most overriding stat that coaches look for is yards per attempt. Right. I think, did Frank want like 7.5? Is that what it was? I think he said 7. It was somewhere like 7.4 seven, or 7.6 seven, yeah. and in that range. And Richardson, I, I Richardson when, was like 11, yeah. which was absurd. Yeah, it is. But Bo Nix had a high-volume pass day with very low. Right, okay. that's another, per, per, per that's another one. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's that's why I say as much as we, 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 we get critical on Richardson, because well, because we see it every day, and that's mm-hmm. this, this is the team we cover. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, I was encouraged. They've got well, they've got to get the run game going. And as I said from the start, two thirteen on the ground, giving up ain't going to make it. Yeah, as of right now, I'm thinking they're going to run better than they did week one. I'm thinking they're going to stop the run better than they right. did week one for the for the length of the entire season. Um, it's well, those it's the other things, I guess, that are still. Like, yeah, well, so, so it was, work to good work to do. Wasn't that last Texans drive uh, not not the the one at the end of the game, but the last one that they scored on? Wasn't that like seven and a half minutes plus right. somewhere in there? Yeah, right. I think it was. You know, well, so. we, we talked to Buck today. Buck in I think that's going to be a game time decision, and I think I think he plays. We talked. He's missed two games in, in his, his whole career. career. One with an injury with the uh, Niners in his rookie year, and then one with the Colts. COVID. Mm-hmm. That's it. I think he plays maybe limited, but we talked to him about. Somebody said, "Well, what about facing Malik Willis?" He said, "Well, he said after what you see, he, he expects to get steady doses of Josh Jacobs." He said, "Based on what we showed Sunday, 
That's what that's what the NFL is about. You guys showed you were weak against a run, so let's see if you're weak against a run. Because it did feel like, I mean, especially as that game wore on, um, the offense, to its credit, you know, they, they did come up with some plays, but even when they blocked the punt, the, the special teams, that was one play getting to the end zone. Defense is right back out there. Those guys were, were gassed, and by the end of that game, just guys getting blown off blocks, linebackers not being able to shed guys. Okay, okay but they dressed – 10 offensive line or defensive linemen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they it, played. It shouldn't be that way. They played 10 defensive linemen. I understand rotation. I understand we, we want to keep guys fresh at the end of the game. And I was semi joking with Ryan Kelly. I said, why is it with the offensive line that ideally all five guys stay out there every play? Yet defensively, they shuffle 10 guys in there. And I said, are you, are, is the defensive line? I, mean, I, I realize there's more exertion defensively you're 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 attacking you're pursuing but and i asked Brett, gus bradley that monday i said at what point does the rotation work against you because you've got frontline players for a reason there's a reason your top six guys are your top six guys and your, and your last four are your, are not right so i just think now it'll be different this week with buck i think he's gonna pitch count i don't know i think they limit him but and, and quitty pay is not practicing. Right. Like, I don't know what his injury was. I, don't, I can't remember what it was. A hamstring. I had read hamstring. Okay. And Blackman is a? Shoulder. Don't Ooh. know which shoulder, but shoulder is what they had listed in the report. I'm sure you've got this on From this From carrying list. the secondary. I'm sure you've got this on the list, and I'm sorry. I just, That's okay. You can jump. That's what we do. So they lose Juju Brents mm-hmm. to a knee surgery. Uh, and and right. a game that he finished, and also when asked about injuries after the game, not even mentioned. Well, people talk. I didn't. A couple of guys talked to him in the locker room, and and he looked fine, moving fine. And yep. I'm sure he went home, and the knee didn't feel quite and right. And swelled up or it, something. It happens. Yep. It's just yeah. it's bizarre. Right. That's that's all. And then to do the MRI and, and, and surgery. I was told that there there's there was hope before before surgery that and I don't know what the surgery showed, but that he could come back maybe in mid December. But th- this just shows you how, how often, how many times did had, did we mention about not signing a veteran corner, and not signing a veteran safety. So you, you lose Juju, so what, you know, who, who's your who's your second outside corner? Well, it's Kenny, it's Kenny Moore. Uh-huh. I, I, I think Kenny not Moore. Not Dallas Flowers. Coming back from Achilles, I, I. You think you put Kenny outside and then I'd you put, use I'd Lomac put, as, your, as your nickel? Or Lamont's. Or Lamont's. One of those two. If Mac is up for it, if, maybe if he's if up to ready speed. for it. And, yeah, and, and then you, so you're messing with two positions, but I'd rather have Kenny outside. And, and the fact that you got Malik Willis, if he goes for 250 through the air, shame on Nicole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but, but you're one. Now, now you're one. If this shoulder, this shoulder, Blackman probably plays, but you don't know. But imagine you lose him. And, and I, I always thought safety was more tenuous. Then corner, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they did sign Ronnie Harrison to the practice squad. Yep. Now he's yes. in with yes. all, all training camp. And, and he's back. So, so then you know Nick's your free, and then Ronnie Harrison just strong. That's so, possible, yeah. And That's he's played, he's played and played well, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, but that just shows you that that how things can change in a in a heartbeat. And gosh, who who could have predicted Juju getting hurt? Brutal. I mean, like, great kid, but he's he's dealt with something since he's been here and it's been nicks and knacks and some big things that he's dealt with too right. like you come back from a big thing and then something smaller happens this, this is certainly a big this thing. will be his third surgery in since i uh, gosh june because remember he had the ankle clean yep. up mm-hmm. in june yep yep broken nose which uh, procedure surgery uh, procedure yeah. it's still a procedure they, they, they did they cut your skin yes <laughs> did they, it's a surgery right did they, yeah have to set bones in place and uh, solder them together or whatever the heck they do in there or yeah exactly it's it's not pretty so like and, and once again like a, another thing that we talked about through the off season about about what has failed the colts in the past we, Chris we, ba- we will get to your outline we will i'm sure oh, eventually no will. really uh this <laughs> is really just lingering questions from week one section so we've just skipped it up to the top and that's totally fine but obvious like obvious problems with the roster that that chris ballard has has failed to address um that, that will say 
year after year. And then this year it was the secondary. Like you mentioned earlier, chap, it was like it, the story at the beginning of the offseason, like all of us anticipating, well, who, which cornerback are they going to sign mm-hmm. in free? Yep. Which safety which are they going to go it, get? It, it wasn't if, it was which. But but it turned into, well, we like our guys. Then and I can say the same thing on Monday. And and he he makes the point, Bauer does, that they need to play. And that's completely correct. I, I, I totally agree. They, they need to play. But what else needs to happen is you need to win games as well. And 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 if if you lose one or two now apparent starters when you did not do anything significantly to boost strong top starting quality depth in your secondary then you're just up a creek and and, and especially when and I, I don't mean to be too critical but you're not exactly talking about At times. two iron man players between Justin Black or Julian Blackman and Juju Brintz because they've both unfortunately had a history of having injuries and having missed time. Well, Blackman missed the last game or the last couple of games last year mm-hmm. with shoulder. Shoulder. Yep. So yeah, the, and, and what drives everyone crazy, including myself and all of us, is it, it it wouldn't have taken that much to shore it up. I mean, I, the names from the past, the, the, you know, Mike Adams level player, uh, Rodney McLeod, Mike Mitchell. Two million dollars, three million dollars. That's all it would have taken. One year. You're not, and would they have taken away snaps from Rodney Thomas? Yeah, but 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 you've got a better player out there now. You know what you can do? You can platoon them for crying out loud. You can do what the defensive line does all the time. You can have one section, one series for him. One ser- if you really want him to play, let, then do that for crying out loud. There there are other options that, than just leaving your young guys out there. And then if somebody gets hurt, like I said, you're in trouble. Next man up. Well, the next man is uh, going to be even less experienced than the current man. Kenny uh, Moore has more games and more starts than the rest of the DBs combined. The rest, rest of the cornerbacks combined. How about that? Well, uh, probably whoever else plays. Well, I guess Rodney T- Rodney Harrison has had a good amount of experience before. That, before. Yeah, but he, so, but he's a safety. So he so. has a safety. Yeah, you're right. But that that's crazy. That That's a crazy stat. Uh, that, well, wow. and that, that just shows the, the youth. And like I said, I understand – they they see promise in these guys and you, and yes the only way you get better is to play and all it's that true. but 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 at the same time and, and and I don't think the the secondary cost them the game so no I, mean, I don't think so I, either I thought they played okay now they only got their hands on like they were they were they were credited with one I think one pass defense pass defense and, yeah. yeah so that's that's not good but the but the pass rush was better so we'll, yeah. we'll see like I'm I was fine with the secondary I, I think that there were some plays here and there that were questionable but but overall I, I thought that that's what you could ask for from well, the, this the, secondary the against that the team third and the third and nine was it to was it to collins yeah on the sideline at the end of the game jones had it I mean, was great coverage. good coverage that, that's the perfect example of there's no defense for the perfect pass because yep. it was right there mm-hmm. and and but I don't know. Yeah, you, Collins got his. It was at third and eleven. They got like twelve yards well, on they, it. They got one. Or, they got one more than they needed. And and it was just there was not much of a window there. The ball right. was there, and then Collins made an incredible catch because he had to get a knee down, right? Yeah. In order to stay in bounds and get that, mm-hmm. because when I first saw it, first blush, I'm like, that ball's too far outside. There's right. no way he got that in bounds. Right. And then of course, oh yeah, okay, Gets the he knee did. Down. And it was just a tremendous, yeah. tremendous throw. And then, you know, the, the other one where Collins, the, the Colts killer, third and – I think it was third and 14. Oh, jeez, Third and 17 yeah. play. Yeah, yeah. third and 17, yeah. jeez. Uh, where, um, you know, the Colts were chasing after Stroud. He rolls to his right, and then he throws across his body, and there's all by himself in the middle of the field – Nico Collins. Yep. Thank you, sir. Like, I, I, I tweeted after that play. Like, I, I felt so many things on that play. Like, you, if you're a defense, you can't allow a quarterback to do that. Like, but also at the same time, it's it's so difficult to ask a secondary to cover for that long, right. for as, as long as he's tar- – like, so, so if you're going to get beat, I think get beat – on, on this sideline, I, I, I guess. But everyone's rolling to this side, so you just forget about the, the backside coming behind you. That's just it, – it just goes against everything that, that the football fan knows is that you, you can't throw across your body like that and, and, and come away Because nine times out of ten, it feels like that gets picked off by the defense because exactly. you can't get enough on yeah, that throw. But, but, yeah, props to Stroud, man. Like, he, he made some – like, in, in really clutch times, in important times, made the best throws of the game and found his – best receivers at those times e- even at the beginning of the game when they were trying to get some momentum going for the texans he's slipping around near the logo at midfield mm-hmm. he falls 
keeps his head up, completes a pass for a first down. From his knees. Uh, from his knees. You just cannot teach that type of stuff. That that slippage is something that has to get get fixed, by the way. I don't know if it's – like, I didn't see much in the preseason. Did, so they, did they paint repaint the logo? They I, might have. I see, don't know. But where I, was, I first started ahead. seeing the problems was when the Texans got to midfield, mm -hmm. I noticed Stroud slipping a lot around the logo, and I didn't know if they freshly painted that. But then later in the game – you would also see people make some slips not Richard, right in that Richardson area. Richardson slip on the long touchdown. Right, right. It wasn't on the logo. No, he wasn't. No, he was it wasn't. still on like he the 30. He was further back than he that. Was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he was, yeah, he was, he was yeah. behind Ooh. the logo. I was thinking that maybe it was the sun. Like the sun shining in from, but they did, from we the did, stadium. We, but we saw it like in the preseason, the sun wasn't out. You know, it was covered up. There weren't by the roof. In, in, no, there wasn't. That's the thing. Right. So in the preseason, you didn't see anything because... Like, but but I'm sure this turf is installed elsewhere. That's just outside, just cleats. not here. Maybe the exact. But but if you wore the wrong cleats, what are you doing? What right. are you doing? Right. Well, both teams would wear the wrong right. cleats too. So I, like I, you I said, Stroud. Weird, weird games. The Colts play weird games, and uh, and and of course that 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 part was just another yeah, weird. Right. The footing was uh, definitely not what no. definitely not what we had seen in the preseason. They played what two of their preseason games were right. home games, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Um, yeah, that was uh, out of the ordinary, and they didn't seem to be uh, talking to the Colts. Of course, they're not going to say, "Oh, our field's terrible," and we're not going. But they didn't seem to be overly concerned about it after the game. Either. Right. Should, should note before we move on to to this week's opponent that uh, Matt Gay, uh, the uh, Colts kicker, did have a full practice on Wednesday and was out. I believe. Well, Wednesday was his big kicking day. Brett said he's kicking today. Okay, Brett said he's kicking today. Our photographer, Brett Bed. Excuse me, Brett Bensley. Um, so, and, and when we talked to Gay in the locker room on Wednesday. Uh, he said he said he wasn't ready last week. I mean, he went out. If you were at the stadium, you saw him go out and mm -hmm. kick a bunch of balls and, and was just putting himself really to work. And I'm sure he just didn't feel right after that because he didn't play. Um, and, and when I, I asked him specifically in the locker room, I said, how close were you last week? He said, yeah, I wasn't there. So and, and, and that's kind of how and that was fine. He wasn't going to give a percentage, it seemed like um, just like saying I wasn't there. I wasn't ready. Um, so so this week he, he looks to be on a better track for sure. Uh, to being ready uh, since he was out there on Wednesday and then he's out there Thursday again. It's always the next day how you how exactly you do. and if he's kicking again today and if Downs is out there again today that's right. Just, that's Th those it, are usually good indications. Great, great yeah. sign. Spencer they're, they're, Schrader comes out, kicks it, makes his kicks, whatever he needed to. So I mean, right. he wasn't really put to the test significantly, but still, like you go out there and you need to make the kicks that, that still, are given still to you. A longer uh, extra point in the NFL than it is in college. <laughs> and shoot, so. in, in the NFL, the way teams sometimes go through kickers, you put some good tape on there. Now Spencer Schrader is a is a name that is in the mix after the preseason he put forth and uh, hitting a 50-yarder there and then uh, in week one 56. going perfect. 56-yarder, exactly. Uh, that's that's pretty darn good. So, like, if – assuming Matt Gay is back, I would not be surprised to see somebody snap up Spencer Schrader if the Colts decide to keep him on the practice squad, which I don't know if they will because – I don't know why you wouldn't. Exactly. Well, yeah, if you – You got 16 spots. Right. That's a, That is a lot of I mean, spots. So maybe four, they do keep him. they got four corners on the, on the practice squad. Yeah, but maybe they uh, – uh, maybe maybe another team signs him sometime this season if they're going through trouble just based on what we saw from him, I think, I, these I last think couple weeks. I think teams can do things – to, to entice a player to stay uh -huh. uh, financially, but if somebody, but if a team is going to sign you, it, it used to be whether it still is that you you sign a guy for three games, three active game checks. If somebody wants wants you through your agent, you're going to go. You would think so because you're going to be that team's kicker right. right away. So. Yeah, but no, it's it, it's. There's only 32 jobs in the world. That's right. And if you have your opportunity to get one, you get one. Yeah. Yep. Even even if it's with a crappy team or whatever, you you do it because. You just never know. Yeah, I mean, and, I, and that paycheck's way better oh, uh, a game like check than two and it is a half on, times better. Yeah. Than, I can, than I can understand a defensive end or a linebacker liking the team he's at, and if he's going somewhere that he doesn't like or doesn't like the coach or has a bad experience, uh, like I can understand you right. being able to talk that guy into staying. Right. But a kicker, I don't think you can talk him into staying no. if somebody's signing him to be, I'd a, be a kicker I'd like somewhere. to see a couple of games from the Colts, a couple of games of Matt Gay yes. kicking and with no issues. And staying right. healthy. And keeping right. that hernia surgery intact inside and not tearing, re tearing Two and a half weeks. End of August. Just, something wrong. Well, those lines. Yeah, like, so, I, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was shocked to see the pregame footage or reporting of Matt Gay out there kicking before the game. I didn't think he was going to play. Uh, there were some people that were suggesting, well, we hadn't seen Spencer Schrader yet, but I, I didn't think he was going to play. But I was still like, this dude's two weeks, maybe less than two weeks out of surgery, and you're talking about a, a tear, either of the groin or of the abdomen. 
I just I could with not a, believe with a vicious torque right mm-hmm. with, on, on that area with what those kickers do with flexibility right. and all that stuff mm-hmm. that they put on their bodies. I, I couldn't believe that, but yeah. uh, tough t- tough dude uh, regardless, Matt Gay. The Indianapolis Colts will take on the Green Bay Packers this week at Lambeau Field in the very not frozen tundra up north in Wisconsin. So it looks like uh, eighty low, degrees, say low 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 to mid eighties, and, and uh, perhaps for the a, weekend, perhaps a little rain. However, so you're gonna have to deal with that. Nevertheless, um, it's a one o'clock kickoff broadcast. If you're in uh, if you're in Central Indiana on Fox fifty nine, taking on a uh, an NFC opponent there, uh, the Packers lost their season opener to the Eagles in Brazil thirty four to twenty nine. That was a heck of a game. On a slippery field, mm-hmm. it was. Yeah, also they, they had a lot of problems. They did. On that That's turf. a soccer field down there, and it just wasn't up to snuff. Pitch right. Uh, the pitch. The yes, pitch. down the pitch Absolutely. down there in Brazil. Thank you, chap. Uh, all other NFC North teams won, so the Packers are are playing a bit of catch up there. To As the, opposed to the Colts, everybody else in the uh, say the Texans, the only team that won. Last I said week. the Colts are tied for so, second. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, you're not you're not too far behind. Um, the big concern for the Packers is quarterback Jordan Love, who was injured at the end of that game, reportedly an MCL sprain that could keep him out three to six weeks. They're playing a bit of uh, gamesmanship uh, here and not ruling him out just yet. But, Chap, I would be stunned if Jordan Love is able to actually play in this game this weekend. Yeah, again, it, the one thing on the plus side for the Packers is they did not have not put him on IR, which is four games. But... You know, it's Adam Schefter, Mr. NFL Insider p- podcast or wherever it was, put out there that he's expected to miss two games. And it's not that Adam Schefter is a doctor; it's just that he shares the same agent with Jordan Love. Aha! So, ah, yeah. There you go. So you know, I mean, little you know. inside dish, huh? <laughs> so <laughs> I, it's gonna, it's just gonna, it's gonna be Malik Willis, and and as I said, if, if this defense allows him to do something he started three games well the third round pick of the titans in 22 i think think two years ago three starts and you know 48 percent 50 percent completions no touchdowns three interceptions the quarterback rating is like 38 so this is one where they they cannot allow malik willis to have his breakout game and we've we have seen this before uh, with some of the backups, right? So <laughs> Matt so, talks like a veteran Colts fan over there with uh, yes, his experience. So, so again, this is one where you just if you're the defense, it's gonna yeah, it's gonna be difficult if you're missing those three. I don't think think all three of those guys miss the game. I really don't. We'll have a much better idea with the Friday uh, participation report, right? But even if they are, even if they are. Doggone, this guy has done very little in his career. He, the, the Titans, uh, what did they ship him for, a seventh? After, yeah, just completely giving up on a third-round pick. They just gave, gave him away. It's like, now nah, we're good. Right. And, so, and he's only been with the team for like two weeks. They, they traded in August. Yeah, late August. And so they really – I don't I, there's, I don't think there's another quarterback on the active roster. I think there is one on the practice Sean squad. Sean Clifford, mm-hmm. I believe, is yeah. on the practice oh, squad. Oh, I forgot him. Yeah. Sean Clifford. Okay. He was the guy who actually, uh, ironically, uh, supplanted uh, Will Levis in at Penn State, oh, really? who is now the starting quarterback of the Titans, who was ahead of Malik Willis, of course, who is now <laughs> traded to the Green Bay Packers, who is oh, ahead of Sean Clifford. Uh-huh. They're going to run Josh Jacobs, and I think he's got a pretty good backup. I've not looked. I just, I've been too Colts focused. Mm-hmm. They're going to run the ball. And 35 times. And then they're going to run the ball. Right. And then, get this, they're going to run, run the, ball. the ball again. Yeah. That's why, again, the Colts had this defensive plan to give up whatever. They, they were going to be just fine giving up 150 yards. They were. Mm-hmm. But you can't. You, they've got to keep. I, I, I say, I'm, I'm not going to be so concerned with the total that Green Bay has. They're going to, they're going to rush for 120 yards because they're going to run the ball 40 times. Right. It's going to be yards per attempt. And and don't let a quarterback who has done very little so far do anything. This is this is a this is a get well game. Yeah. And I'm I'm always guilty of looking ahead. But after this game with Malik Willis, you've got the Bears at home with Caleb Williams and he had a inefficient game. Mm-hmm. Is that a that's time a good way to that's put a nice it. way to put yes. it. Yeah. No no offensive touchdowns, I don't think. No yeah. offensive touchdowns. A block, a block punt and a pick six. A- and then who was it? Pittsburgh. With Justin Fields or Russell Williams, or maybe maybe mm-hmm. Russell Russell Wilson, and neither one 
is it scares you. None of them scares you. No. Neither so so th- this is a, a September to get well, but it starts with Green Bay, and we can get into it a little bit about the Lambeau Field is is a bucket list game, a bucket list location, and you've got to get through the initial. I don't think these players get in all. Maybe these young players don't don't really know the history. They probably don't of of Lambeau. And we were talking to whoever it was, Zaire Franklin, who I he had he finally admitted he's not played at Lambeau Field, but he, <laughs> but he's going to. I said that doesn't count. Chapin uh, was having a knockdown drag said, out with yeah, Zaire in the locker room. Because yesterday Zaire said, like, "Well, I told Joe Flacco I played in every stadium." Well, no, you haven't. You're, you're gonna play in Lambeau. But one of them said, "What's cool is you walk out." And you look at the Ring of Honor in the Packers, and their Ring of Honor's probably got, oh, got thirty guys. They could go around and stadium. They're, and they're Hall of Fame and guys, around and around you know, and the around. Bart Stars and all these guys. So you've got to get past the initial. Holy crap! This is Lambo, but maybe the young players mm-hmm. that have played in all these major games and championships, they don't really get caught up in that it's possible i did like jonathan taylor saying he might try a lambo leap if he scores because he of course played at wisconsin true so i'm sure there are going to be a lot of badger fans uh who of course alex to- pierce has a bunch of family because he's he's yep. a, a wisconsin guy yep his a, dad is from milwaukee right and uh, he grew up in illinois but again talking to him in the locker room today right. he made sure to say that there are plenty of packers fans like alongside him in illinois which you would think is bears country but there there's a fair share so what happens when a, an opposing player does a lambo leap and it's they usually Packers. get pushed off, you, you, or you they get stuff sort of dumped on. Say them. beer, beer dumped on. Exactly, them. that's usually what happens. But but it's Jonathan Taylor, man. Like you're you're Wisconsin fans. True, you might and, get hey, a pass, right? He might get a pass, and also if they feel good, if Wisconsin beats Alabama the day before, that's going to be a it's going to be a massive weekend in in Wisconsin for uh, for football fans. I mean, Wisconsin Alabama on Saturday, Packers Colts the home opener on Sunday. Packers have not lost a home opener 11 in straight. eleven years, eleven years in a row. I think I saw that this will be the first time in like 91 games second time in 91 games they started a backup quarterback i was gonna say i'm sure for all those 11 uh games either jordan love or aaron Rodgers was the starting quarterback so and the last backup quarterback to start a game was jordan love there you go when aaron (laughs) Rodgers missed a game with covid Uh uh-huh and they they lost but they did uh, you, you just if you're a good team you don't lose to ineffective backup quarterbacks there, there, there was a lot of hand wringing after that game too wasn't there when yeah. when jordan love came in they're like oh what oh, what, 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 what have we done oh, no. this guy's not going to be very good he looked okay give, give, give him some time good. yeah was last year as a starter and then in his first game the packers looked looked fairly good on offense they they gained more than 400 yards i'm pretty sure or they gained a, a lot their defense gave up more than 400 yards too there was there was a lot of uh, offense in yeah, this game. They had, they had, more, four, they had 410, the, yeah. the Packers did. And they proved that they can run the ball, too. They had 21 carries for 163 yards. They averaged 7.8 yards per rush. Can't do that. No. Just can't do that. Exactly. And, and they, they, I'm sure in that locker room, they're licking their chops at what they saw. But here's the deal. Like you said, like the Colts' strategy in that game was different. It was not to let C.J. Stroud beat them. I'm sure the defensive line was playing a different game. They were playing either wider or more separate to try to delete or what's it called, rushing lanes or escape lanes for Stroud. Uh, I, there's there's no way that the Packers are going to get the same looks that the Colts gave the yeah, Texans Bradley in said the run was, game. It was defend the run on the way to the passer. Right. Well, that has to be different. That is right. going to be different in this week. So that that that's something I think the Colts, the Colts fans can look at and be encouraged by. This is not something that you definitely are going to see again. This is something that, that should be fixed. It should be different. I think the Packers, like you said, are still going to run for a fair amount of yards because they have to. Uh, but but it's not going to be – it should not be uh, so, as the long same as they look do as it, week one. As long as they do it at volume and, right. and not, oh, just a few handful of rushes right. get of you course. a bunch of yards. And then, and then when it's third and three, you, you, you get off the field. Yeah. Right. With with, with pressure, with whatever. So, the toughest yeah. thing with Malik Willis, of course, is he is a mobile quarterback. Right. So you you got to you gotta keep him – He will run more than Stroud did. I think so, too. Yeah, you got to keep him in the pocket, man. Like, you, you can't let him get, escape. Uh, you'd, you'd much rather see third and eight. And if he breaks away, he has to scramble for eight yards. Right. Then you third can probably and three, get him and he has to just whoosh, dive yeah. forward for a couple. So, so the first and second downs will be key. Um Important plays, important downs will be key. The Col- the uh, the Packers defense looked like it was really opportunistic against the Eagles. They forced three turnovers there uh, in that game. Um, so so they have they have the playmakers there on the defensive side of the ball to to be 
uh, to be dangerous to the Colts. So again, on that's like you can't. That's another thing that that you can't do. A, you're on the road. You can't give the home team uh, momentum like that. And B, you can't give a backup quarterback a short field. Right. Uh, these are basic things like in the NFL, like turnovers and, and points in the red zone stuff. That if you win or third down conversions, that you point to these important stats. If you win those, you usually win the game. But I mean, that that's doubly so with a right. backup quarterback in the game. Yeah. Again, you you, you, you want to make the the, the if you want to call it the weak link, you want to make that guy beat you. Just why you don't want, you know, in the past, you don't want a Devontae Adams or, a, or, or Nico Collins beat you, which the Colts couldn't keep Collins from doing last year. But when you've got it, when you've got a, a decided advantage, take advantage of it. When is the last time the Colts, of course, they don't go to Lambeau a lot, have been on the road and been a three point favorite? They're three or three and a half point favorite. They, they were. They did win five road games last year. They were actually that. a really good road team, to be fair. Oh, I go have to go back and see how many times they were favored. Exactly. I don't know that. if they ever were. Yeah. But that you know, it, it's it just sh- it just shows you the the emphasis that the odds makers who are good at what they do. It's why they keep building casinos. Yep, and it's why the current casinos have gold plated ceilings. Right, is because they know what they're doing, and this is all based. You know, what, what would the spread be if Jordan Love was healthy? Four? I, th- I think they were plus. I think they were favored by four yeah, uh, that's, uh, to, to open. That's before a right. touchdown that's difference. A, that's a touchdown that's difference. That's big. That's massive yeah. in, in, in college and NFL. It's all based on the quarterback. And that's why I say make this guy beat you. And if he does, shame on you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Colts last played at Lambeau Field in 2016 when Frank Gore scored a pair of touchdowns and the opening kickoff was returned for a score. That was, of course, Jordan, Jordan Todman. Famous Colt Jordan Todman <laughs> bringing it down. There's uh, a name not in the I've not heard in a long time. 99 yards back to the house and uh, Andrew excuse me, Andrew Luck and Aaron Rodgers uh, squared off in that one. Uh, if you remember the 2020 game, it was a really good one. An overtime winner by Rodrigo Blankenship. It was like 34-31, I believe, was yep. the final score. It was, a, it was a fun game, man. Yes. Of course, being in, in 2020, everybody tries to just block everything out from that year. I understand. Was there an interception in the, in the fourth quarter or overtime of Rodgers? That set up the window, either the field goal to send it over I remember time. that, but I don't remember who got it or anything. I'll, I'll leave that to you. So I'm pretty sure the Packers tied it up in regulation. So right. if that, that must have overtime. been overtime. Okay. Okay. Uh, first Colts Packers game without Peyton Manning or Aaron Rodgers since 1997. That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Though. And, and that 97 game, we were just talking about this with JJ Stankovitz in, uh, in the Colts uh, in the Colts media room today. Chap was I had forgotten it. Well, now you remember yes. 1997 game. Yes. The Indianapolis Colts sent out Paul Justin, and the 0 and 10 Colts got the win over Brett Favre's reigning champion Packers at the RCA Dome. It was a last second kick from Kerry Blanchard. That's a good pull there, Matt, from the uh, from the I, archives. And okay, this is a, a silly story. Go but, ahead, we love silly um, stories. You know, I, I was about what seventeen when that happened, uh-huh. and uh, I had told my my dad wanted me. Uh, our church was doing a, a Christmas choir. My dad wanted me to join the Christmas choir. I was a little reluctant, but I told him, Dad, if the Colts beat the Packers this week, uh. I will join you on the church choir for the Christmas program. And of course. There it is. The Colts now one and ten. Uh, Carrie Blanchard wins the game for him, and I was I, uh, Dad and I were in the Christmas. And Matt choir is up that singing year. the Hallelujah Hallelujah chorus on Absolutely. stage there. Handles Messiah. There. Is there a video? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Gosh, I hope not. But I hope there so. may be. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to get in touch. Maybe we can play it to, to bump into our next uh, Just, uh, next uh, it's podcast. A, it's a next treasured week. Adams family memory that, that my dad <laughs> brings up whenever the Colts and the Packers play. Adams <laughs> family memory. That's funny too, <laughs> as as well. Just uh, silly things, man. Uh, Peyton Manning and uh, Brett Favre aired it out in. 2004. One each, of the best games I've ever seen. Each had 360 plus passing yards and four touchdowns or more. Uh, 2012 was the Chuck Strong game, of course, and we've done this. I've done this story before um, for some of our Blue Zone coverage. That's uh, pregame shows on 1130 AM in Central Indiana, uh, broadcast on CBS4 and a couple of the other, the other uh, markets around us too. But that was that was such a emotionally charged game uh, with uh, with. Bruce Polian, no, Bruce, Bruce, Pol- Arians. Bruce Arians, geez. Was it, the first, it was the first game without Chuck. Yes, yeah, first, game, first without game without Chuck. Chuck. So After Arians the, goes what, out. Leukemia? Yeah. Diagnosis? They had a bye, I think. Uh-huh. And then they came back. And Reggie Wayne caught 13 balls for 212 yards. He had the orange gloves uh, there and scored the game-winning touchdown with uh, under a minute left. Almost like Richardson where he's hit it like the two or the three. And yep. he's 
squeezes and reaches. Go, and, go, gadget yeah, arms. That play for Richardson, you, you, you bring that up. I oh, forgot yeah. about it. Like, I think that was, that was a tremendous play. And, and I think some, people are talking about carrying a defender into the end zone, which is great. Yeah, no, that was impressive to me. Like, he did something just as impressive beforehand. Is he was kind of stumbling, but he was still able to juke Al, uh, Aziz Al Shair out of his shoes. Like, he dove for Richardson and got nothing but air. Like, if you dive for a 250-pound quarterback, you usually there's hit a, something. a big target. And Al Shair is was last year the fifth leading tackler in the NFL yeah, he's a good playing player, for the man. Tennessee Titans. He's a good linebacker, and he hit nothing when Richardson was not even at his best, kind of stumbling around and still able to juke uh, juke him uh, and, and, and make him hit air. So, so that, to me, was just as impressive from Richardson on that fourth down touchdown right. run. Like I said, there's going to be things you see from him that are out of this world this year, and I think that was one of them. The, the Pierce throw was one of them, and, and there, there's going to be – you're going to keep seeing those. It's going to be – He's our leading rusher right now. He is. Uh, that will not last, I don't no. think. R- respect it, to him, it, but it, it better, better not. not, says Mike Chappell. He's on pace for like, I don't know, 1,050 or whatever it is. Yeah. We saw a slide last week, too. We did. How yes. about that? It was after uh, after a little while, mm-hmm. but he still slid. And we're, we're going to see, I think the, the team record for rushing touchdowns is five. For That's, a quarterback? For a quarterback, yes, yeah. I mean, it'll be gone by midseason. By, I was going to say, by, by week eight, easily, he, he, I think. He should get a chance for one every game. Mm-hmm. You know, first and goal to five mm-hmm. or third and goal to five. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So as I mentioned before, 1 p.m. kickoff. If you're in Indianapolis, it'll be broadcast on Fox 59. As Mike Chappell uh, astutely said in his uh, degenerate voice, the uh, Colts are three-point favorites, or three-and-a-half point, I think, is, is technically the yeah, line, three-and-a-half in most places. And I also saw the, uh, the over-under is only 40.5, 40 40-and-a-half. Like, you do not see a lot of 30s mm-hmm. for lines of the NFL. That's usually reserved for games where both teams have backup quarterbacks. That's backup quarterback. Influenced without exactly. question. No doubt. No doubt about it. So 40 and a half. Um, yeah, that, that's a low number to me. I would definitely pick the pick the over. But again, there's a chance that the Packers go out there and put up 10 points, you know, or 12 points. And then the Colts would have to score 30 themselves, which is certainly possible. Um, but but anyway, that that's why, because, I mean, you have Malik Willis starting and Vegas is saying, eh, we don't trust him all that much out there. So anyway. Um, it's another reason you take care of the football. You know, turnovers don't give uh, a, a, an offensively offensive challenge team exactly like you said a short field. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, and, and the Packers last week they did force three turnovers and mm-hmm. they still lost that game. Right, right. I think they they were minus two or uh, plus. Mm-hmm. Plus two in turnovers. I think they had one turnover. So last week, my prediction was uh, was thirty one to twenty seven, uh, and the uh, the Texans ended up winning twenty nine twenty seven. So, so I was mi- two so you, all points off. So you missed it. I, I was two points <laughs> off last week. So I honor myself by going last this time as we uh, as we give our projections. So Chap, why don't you go first? Matt, you'll go second. No, I'll, uh, I'll bring us to the finish here as we uh, get set for this Colts Packers game this weekend. Well, I'll stay Homer on the Homer train, twenty seven twenty. Uh, again, this is the one. I don't care if it's pretty or not. I I, I, I want to see the offense kind of show more than than the, than the boom plays. I think they will, but they need to get back to where uh, they're averaging five yards a carry. They're they're converting and they're staying on the field and having the ball more than forty three times in twenty minutes. So I think they get well. The, the defensive injuries give me pause, but doggone the quarterback ha- the, Malik Willis has done nothing of substance other than be traded by the team that took him. So this is this is where you start getting feeling good about you, better about yourself. 27-20 Colts. Matt, what do you think? I will retain some horseshoe optimism until about week 5. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll go ahead and go with the Colts here. Let's say uh 27 to 17. Okay. I'm also going to pick the Colts. I like uh 23-17. Uh so it'll be right around 40 points just just to hit that number right there, but uh, I think the Colts uh, have a good chance, really good chance of winning this game. And there's a reason that you could actually uh, predict that they're going to snap the Green Bay uh, win streak in it's their lo- home opener because it's a, it's a, Aaron Rodgers is not playing and right, Jordan Love is not playing. It's 11 straight. It's the longest in franchise history. That's pretty good. And the next longest active streak in the NFL is three. How about that? So, you know, but get get past hopefully these young players, you know, don't they, they don't know anything about Lambeau. They don't care about Lambeau. Maybe the older player, Ryan Kelly, those guys know. DeForest Buckner, mm-hmm. they talk high about it. Jonathan Taylor, it means something. A lot of these guys, they, they've played in big-time stadiums. Uh, so get past that. And then 
take care of business and come home. So it'd be a different story, obviously, if Jordan loves in, in the no line. Hundred percent. But you've you've got the backup. You've got your chance to get one and one. Get yourself back at five hundred. You know, they they need to win this one. This is this is crucial, and this gives you an opportunity that that you did not have at the start of the season. To Absolutely. Be, and, and if you're in the Packers' shoes, also like you're a playoff caliber team. You're zero and one right now in a good division, in mm-hmm. a very good division very good that division. everyone else won. And like you, you need a win. Like, and you're you're thrilled to be at home. But man, you're with the backup quarterback. You're certainly up against it. But they might be in the toughest position of any team with playoff aspirations before the season right now, being zero and one, having a backup quarterback for at least the next two weeks. Um, and that's 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 optimistic. Exactly. That that is two games. that is optimistic. So so they're they're going to be they're going to be like a wounded animal themselves. So they're going to play tough really tough and I think that run game is going to be tough but I do think the Colts are able to get this one on the road return to Indianapolis one and one and uh maybe set themselves up for success, some success over the rest of uh September we will find out but anyway you can read all Mike Chappell's work online fox59.com cbs4indy.com you can follow us all on Twitter at Colts Blue Zone also individually Mike is at mchapel 51 Matt is at statamatty I'm at Dave G underscore sports. We appreciate you listening, and we'll see you next week on the Colts Blue Zone podcast.